Imagine you have a fire in your workplace and the flames ignite a hazardous chemical used routinely by your staff. Where is the safety data sheet, or SDS, for that chemical? Would every one of your staff know where to find it? How quickly can you get a hard copy in the hands of a first responder? Now, in this situation, it's clear that if you can't find the SDS, or if the information is incomplete, it can be a big problem for health and safety. As an employer, you have very specific obligations regarding the collection, storage, and maintenance of safety data sheets, or SDSs. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration mandates these rules through the Hazard Communication Standards. If you're responsible for compliance with the Hazard Communication Standards, I highly recommend taking the time to read the entire standard. Now, when it comes to SDS requirements, let's start by defining an SDS. An SDS is a document provided by the importer or manufacturer that provides important information about a chemical. It includes information geared to different people who might need specifics, everyone from workers or safety and health professionals to emergency personnel. All manufacturers and importers must adhere to a 16-section format that's been internationally standardized. I need to note here that of those 16 sections, four of them fall outside of OSHA jurisdiction, so they aren't mandatory. The headings should be included in the SDS, but it's possible there might not be much information, if any, in the non-mandatory sections. The OSHA mandated sections include, one, identification, two, hazard identification, three, composition or ingredient information, four, first aid measures, five, firefighting measures, six, accidental release measures, seven, handling and storage, Eight, exposure control and personal protection. Nine, physical and chemical properties. Ten, stability and reactivity. And eleven, toxicological information. The four sections that aren't mandatory under OSHA are twelve, ecological information. Thirteen, disposal considerations. Fourteen, transport information. And fifteen, regulatory information. Then the last section is other information. This section is mandatory and will include the date the SDS was prepared and possibly the date of the most recent revision. Now, even though the manufacturer or importer is required to provide the SDS, OSHA dictates that it's the employer's responsibility to ensure that the SDS you receive is complete. In light of this, I highly recommend you read over the minimum information required for each of the 16 sections. You'll find this in Appendix D of the revised standard on the OSHA website. If you receive an incomplete SDS, ask the manufacturer or importer for a new one and don't use the chemical until they provide it. Now let's talk about your main responsibility with respect to safety data sheets. It all breaks down to this. As an employer, you must collect, store, and maintain safety data sheets for every hazardous chemical in the workplace. To do this properly, you should start by designating an individual who will obtain and maintain the SDSs to ensure OSHA compliance. Now, when it comes to collecting the SDS, it's up to the supplier to provide one. Anytime you receive a new chemical, the importer or manufacturer should automatically supply an SDS. Remember, your workplace is responsible for ensuring a full and complete SDS is on site before a chemical is used. So make sure the individual trained to receive SDSs knows what they're looking for and is trained to speak up if an SDS isn't provided or if the one provided isn't complete. You can reach out to OSHA if you're having difficulty. Storage is the second part of the employer's obligation. SDSs must be stored in a binder or file in a hard copy form somewhere within your facility. OSHA also allows the use of an electronic system for storing, organizing, and accessing SDSs but always keep in mind that a hard copy version of each SDS is also required. After all, employees could have difficulty accessing SDSs if there are power failures, system crashes, or problems signing into work computers. Plus, if there's ever a medical emergency involving a chemical, you'll need to have a hard copy ready immediately for first responders and healthcare providers. Regardless of the storage type, the SDS must be easily accessible for all employees. 
This could be in a central location on the plant floor, for example, or in the worksite office trailer on a construction site. If your employees do their work at various locations, the SDSs must be kept at the primary workplace facility. Now, accessibility also applies to making sure employees fully understand the SDSs. So, for example, if some of your employees speak another language, you should provide translation of the SDS to ensure that they fully understand the hazards. Just make sure the English SDS is the first version readily available. Employers are also required to train their employees regarding the SDS formatting, when to access the SDS, and where to find the SDSs at your workplace. Furthermore, you should address who will maintain the SDSs and who can answer any questions for employees. The third employer obligation is maintaining the SDS system. I recommend reviewing the SDSs at least quarterly to ensure that all chemicals have an SDS and any irrelevant SDSs are removed. The supplier should also send you a revised SDS anytime there is a change, <coughs> update, or revision to the required information. As an employer, the more familiar you are with the information in the various sections of an SDS, the better you'll be able to protect your employees. Remember, the focus of the hazard communication program is to ensure the safe use of chemicals in your workplace.